What's up, members of the Barrio? It's John coming to you from Astoria, Queens. And today we're continuing our Locals Guide to New York City Neighborhoods. You guys love it and I love making it. So let's continue this really cool series. And we're in a neighborhood that has a lot of history. It's diverse and there is so much going on. Today's guide is Greg and he's one half of Food and Footprints, my favorite New York City food channel. So make sure to check him out when we're done with this video. He's got a lot to teach you guys. What's up guys, I'm Greg. I'm one half of Food and Footprints. I was born and raised here in Astoria. I love this neighborhood. There's so much diversity here. So I'm gonna show you some of my favorite spots to eat, to explore, some movie filming locations, Astoria Park, much more. As we start this tour, what would you tell somebody who's new to New York City, doesn't know anything about Astoria, the bare essentials? All right, so Astoria is a very diverse community. You have a lot of different backgrounds, especially Greek, huge Greek community. We'll get to that later, of course. And with that comes amazing food. There's a rich movie and TV history here, studios, filming location, much more. So, And speaking of filming locations, that is going to be our first stop. Greg, we are standing in front of one of my favorite all-time movie locations in New York City. This is where A Bronx Tale was shot, and it's just such a good movie. Now, it is a bit of a misnomer because it's A Bronx Tale. It was supposed to be Arthur Ave, but it was actually filmed here in Astoria. So we're right in front of the stoop where C. Cologero, as a kid, watched Sonny shoot a guy over a parking space right in front of his building. And the parking space was right here, which is kind of still open. And then we have the bar where Shea Bippy, that was the bar right there. And now you just can't leave this video yet. <laughs> um, then you have the funeral home, which is shot right over there where Sonny's uh, funeral was. And the apartment too. Yeah, the apartment right upstairs. And what's interesting was there was a woman yelling out the window, pointing stuff out. And she also said that when they were shooting here, they paid her money not to put her head out the window. And she used to always see Robert De Niro around. And speaking of De Niro, you had a little De Niro thing, right? Yeah, speaking of De Niro, this is actually the deli that has his favorite mozzarella in New York City. Apparently he still has people come here to pick it up for him. One of the big stereotypes of Astoria is the Greek community, and we're starting to see Greek signs popping up everywhere, even you know, right here in, yeah. in Greek. And I know that you're really proud of your Greek heritage. Absolutely. I'm half Greek. My family lived here for a long time. Uh, there's so much great food here, culture. You see social clubs, soccer clubs. As a matter of fact, right around the corner, whenever Greece uh, won any big soccer what matches. Show, what show them? Yeah. So when they shocked the world and won Euros in 2004, it was a big party right here. When they won matching the World Cup for in, in passing to the knockout stage the first time, big party right here. I was here chilling. It was a great time. So Greg, I knew any day with you would require me not eating any breakfast. We're both starving. Stop number one, what do we got here? All right, this is my favorite souvlaki in Nido in New York City. They're called the King of Souvlaki. They started off here just as a humble little cart on this corner in the 1970s and they've grown to this huge truck and they've actually had multiple trucks and have brick and mortar now in Brooklyn. So they've done very well. And it's for good reason. The food is amazing here. All right, let's, let's try this out. Half pork gyro, half pork souvlaki, please. Okay. Lemon salt and oregano? Yes, please. And paprika. I love the smoke that's coming out from the top of this truck right there. They are, they are really popular, this spot. And yeah, they're called the king for a reason. We got here, we have the pork gyro, pork souvlaki, half and half. That's the beauty of this truck, they'll do that for you. And it's the hand stacked variety of gyro, it's not that mystery meat. This is how they do it in Greece. I was just in Athens two months ago, I can attest to that. And they have the tzatziki with, made with real yogurt. It's not that white sauce with the mayo, it's just the real tzatziki sauce. And then you have the fries. What's special about these fries, they're fried in extra virgin olive oil, they're amazing. You know, don't count the calories, just get the fries. <laughs> I, I don't eat Greek food that often, which is a shame. We're in Astoria, so you know we're gonna be trying this. So I'm putting the gyro right now into the sauce. Here we go. Mm. Oh man. That is so tender. That might be some of the most tender, juiciest street meat I've ever had before. Unbelievable. Souvlaki, they marinate it for a while. That's why it soaks up a lot of flavor. So, just take a bite. Mm. It's so juicy and so tender. Mm. So the beauty 
of having King Suvlaki on his corner is that diagonally across the street you have Cafe Bullies. So this is a spot they specialize in lukumadas, they're like Greek donuts, they fry them fresh to order, top them with honey, cinnamon, and they also have Greek iced coffees here. And after all that food, it's perfect for right now. It's actually out of signs looking at Athens, for example. Look at all these pastries here, man. Dude, I'm, oh, yeah. I, I am, I'm salivating right now seeing all this here. We got a lot of good stuff. These are uh, lukumadas. They're like Greek donuts. So they're these are actually fried fresh to order. And they're topped the traditional Greek way with honey, it's Greek honey, uh, cinnamon, and powdered sugar. And they're normally shaped like ball shaped, but these are like rings. They're a little lighter, really fresh and crispy. Lukumadas, Greek donuts. First ever time I've also tried these. A lot of firsts today. Mmm. These are really airy, so they're actually a lot lighter than they look. Got the powdered sugar, little honey flavor. Excellent. I just feel like we're, we're hanging around Athens right now. We're just we're chilling yeah. and drinking some coffee. Nothing feels that way. This is what you would do at like 3 p.m. in Athens, just chilling outside, have some rukumadas, have some freddo. Greg, you can tell we're having a good day in Astoria because I've got powdered sugar like all over from those <laughs> Greek donuts. But you've taken us somewhere that I don't think people would necessarily equate Astoria with street art. No, that's the beauty of it. This has really become, what's, this is called the Welling Court Mural Project. It's really become like the capital of graffiti here in Queens and street art because there was the Five Points. A lot of people may be familiar with that. Right off the 7 train in Long Island City, they used to have a lot of street art. Uh, painted on the building and then one night it was whited out it's been torn down since uh development of condos you know no surprise there right but here it's beautiful there's not that many people who come here but uh the pieces are replaced is like right behind us is queen andrea she's pretty well known street artist there, there's a lot here it's really cool and right by uh, the river is hallett's cove part of Astoria near the astoria projects it's, it's beautiful here Greg, you said you've got some history to talk about right here. Yeah, there's a few things. So first, we have the Hellgate Bridge right behind me. The Hellgate Bridge, it's for all the Amtrak and freight trains. So if you take the Amtrak to Boston, you're gonna pass over Astoria on this bridge and pass Randall's Island. And this bridge was actually the inspiration for the Sydney Harbor Bridge. I don't know if a lot of people know that. It's one of my favorite bridges in New York City. And the Hellgate is actually named after this really rough current. They call it Hell's Gate. And it was actually a huge disaster in 1904, the General Slocum disaster, it was this boat that caught fire, a thousand people died. Yeah, this is my old alleyway here, I used to smash tennis balls, handballs and all that. And I bet you there was, was there a city bike when you grew up? Definitely not. <laughs> We'd be hanging out here, there'd be like fireworks, people just hanging out on the stoop. It was, like, it was like an old school New York, people hanging out on the stoop eating Italian ice in the summertime, just chilling, a different, different time. Next stop is the only place that Greg is taking us to that I've actually been before, Bohemian Hall. A great spot if you're looking for some Czech beer, really authentic inside, always very crowded on the weekends, and we just had to include this, especially on a warm day. A good beer right now would just be awesome. All right, we've got two ice cold Pilsners. It is a lot cheaper in the Czech Republic, but still on a warm spring day. Nazdorovi. Nazdorovi. Oh, that hits the spot. spot. Oh yeah, the word's right out of my <laughs> mouth. <laughs> Members of the Barrio, this stop is really different. You guys know how much I like speakeasy bars. You know, going to a bar and not knowing from the outside that it's a bar. Well, this is a deli right here that actually makes good pizza and they don't really advertise it too much. Yeah, it's an awesome spot. It's a deli. They use their own house-made mozzarella here. So they're known for their mozzarella and their cold cuts. It's called Rosario's. It's one of my favorite slices in New York City, period. Hey, how are you? Good, man. Good, good. good. Get uh, two slices, please. Thank you. It's really good. It looks, it, it, looks, it looks really good, I know. And guys, this is kind of the last thing I normally order at a deli. Usually you go to a deli, and you get a sandwich, you get Coke, you get a water, 
I want to segue into something else before we try this. Greg, you like to take people visiting New York to places just like this on your own tour. Absolutely. So we offer on Airbnb Experiences an after dark food tour in Jackson Heights and Elmhurst. And we also have a weekend only hidden gem spot, kind of like spots like these, hidden tacos and hidden other things all over the place. So we have just really low key local spots that we'll take you to, so check us out. So I'm gonna put a link down to Greg's tours, Greg and Jumi, sometimes Jumi joins him, in the description, you want a tour with the master right here. So Greg's been talking about this slice forever. I've seen it in one of his videos. Let's, let's try the deli slice. Mmm. I really like the cheese. Something different about it. And it's very thin. About 275 each. A nice little surprise, I have to say. Kind of like a margarita slice in a way, but without the basil. They have their own house-made fresh mozzarella. It makes a big difference. Very creamy. Their sauce pretty zesty. And I love the thin crust here. It's, the dough has a different kind of taste to it. It's crunchy. It's, it's a really good slice. And for 275, you really can't go wrong for it at all. I, kn I knew there was something with the cheese. I knew it. Yeah, it's, it's a special slice here. Greg, we've talked a lot about the diversity of this area. Now we're entering a spot, I guess you could call Little Egypt, although there's other countries that are represented here. What Absolutely. are some of your favorite things to do here? Oh man, definitely number one is eat. Uh, you, you can eat great Egyptian seafood here, Moroccan food, uh, Jordanian sweets, that's actually gonna be going next. And also smoking hookah. There's a lot of different hookah bars here appealing to the younger crowd. We like the OG spot where all the old Egyptians go. I don't think I've ever seen so many hookah places concentrated on the one or two blocks in my life, especially not in the United States. This has to be the highest concentration of hookah lounges in the US. And we're about to stop at a place that bills itself as the first hookah lounge in the US. Yeah, so the cool thing, this block has a lot of spots for hookah. You know, this is a very popular Friday, Saturday night spot with the younger crowds. A lot of them have bars that serve alcohol. This doesn't, this, is, this caters to the Egyptian crowd, old school spot, they claim they're the first. Who knows if it is or not, but <laughs> all I know is that it's a legit hookah place and we're gonna check it out. And I've not had a good hookah in a long time, so I'm super excited for this. Just walk to the outside to smoke the hookah, and Greg, I feel like we just entered somebody's backyard. Like, it's a little backyard party we're about to have. Yeah, I love these outdoor spots. It's like, and it's also good so you don't have all that smoke coming in. You get, you get a little breather. It's like, it has all the different, like, yeah, that's the, the spot, that's the spot I wanna go to, the old school Egyptian here. spots, yeah. Like the hookahs are always better, yeah. though. You know, it was interesting because the guy who worked here told us that this place tends to get more of the Egyptian local crowd, not really the party scene. They don't serve alcohol here, which is just fine by me. I want something chill like this. This is a very relaxing environment. Now trying the mango mint hookah. Yeah, the mango flavor is very, it's very subtle. And I, I could tell just from puffing this in that this hookah is going to last a very, very long time. Sorry to all my fellow Greeks out there, but uh, I just love pistachio filled baklava. And it's all about Middle Eastern baklava to me. I like a little bit better. Sometimes it's less sweet. I'm going to taste this one. It's been a little while since I've had it. So this comes from Al Sham, it's a Jordanian sweet shop. Let's try this. Mm. Oh, it's very full of pistachios. I love that really taste of pistachios here. We've got the rose water, not too sweet. Not too buttery either, this is excellent. Very well balanced baklava. There's so many amazing ethnic enclaves here that it's just a neighborhood that I think tourists should not skip. Absolutely, so you know, a story is known for the Greek community, but you can cross the Mediterranean, AKA on North Park Steinway Street, and you can catch yourself in Little Egypt, Morocco, and then you also have Brazil, you have the Croatian communities, you have uh, Bangladeshi communities, there's so much. We couldn't capture it all in this one video. That's why you can you could do multiple videos on this neighbor. That's that's how big it is. Amazing hookah right here. Highly recommend it. And that is taking us right now to the end of the tour. Greg, I want to thank you for showing us around Astoria. 
anything else you want to say? Hey, it's been a pleasure. You know, I, I grew up in this neighborhood the first half of my life. I love it. I always have a connection to this place. Uh, it was a pleasure to show you around. And I hope you get to check out this neighborhood. Do some exploring. Check out where we went and do some more exploring as well. And speaking of exploring, uh, check out our channel, Food and Footprints. We do a lot of travel and we do a lot of New York City food under the radar kind of joints. And speaking of that, we also have our food tour and Airbnb experiences, after dark, street food. The only ones in New York City right now doing it. Check us out. Link John's gonna put it in the description below. I'm putting all that in the description. And I'm gonna put all the stops that we had today in the description as well. And if you wanna see my other New York City playlists, feel free, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time. It's time for the airing of grievances. I got a lot of problems with you people. Kruger, my son tells me your company stinks. All right, guys, tell us in the comments, how, how good was that impression? Let us know.